Continuing now with our Behind Enemy Lions series in which we follow the progress of the Warriors of Wildlife as they set about rescuing nine lions from war-torn Ukraine, we are now joined by French photographer Nathan Lane who will be accompanying us on the journey. Nathan has worked extensively worldwide, currently in the employ of Bloomberg and the Washington Post amongst others and as I said extensive experience from all over the world. We thank you for joining us Nathan. You've been in the Ukraine before so tell us what we can expect when we go fetch those nine lions of ours. Um, so we're going to be looking at lots of uh, roadblocks and checkpoints from the Ukrainian army, uh, long queues at border and um, tension the whole war, all of Ukraine is a war zone, even though Odessa is not uh, targeted as much as other cities. We are probably going to hear some sirens and uh, see a lot of soldiers. Now, you have been to Ukraine before. Possible to pick out a moment or an incident from those previous visits that stand out for you? Uh, probably from my first time in Mykolaiv one month ago, uh, the city was getting shelled daily. Uh, night and day and uh, with rockets and uh, at one stage a very very big missile hit the government building and uh, I think the whole city shook so that was that was a, a moment of anxi anxiety and uh, we we got scared because you don't with a missile that's that big uh, you don't know whether it fell one kilometer or 100 meters away from you and the whole city shook so it was very scary tell us a little about the interaction you have as a member of the press as a photographer with the security authorities and the soldiers that are in the ukraine have they felt that you're a hindrance to them and that you get in their way or have they been cooperative and made your job a little easier what sort of attitude have you experienced from the soldiers fighting this war uh, they're very paranoid about giving away their position and weaponry, so it's very hard to photograph soldiers. They don't mind for most of them being photographed, although they are not allowed to, so they've got to cover their face and wear sunglasses most of the time because they're not allowed to show their place of deployment and uh, they are, we are not allowed to photograph their, the, where they are defending their position. Uh, I guess that's strategic, although it makes life harder, but they've got lots of respect for journalists because we are telling the stories and uh, in some way we are also part of the Ukrainian propaganda uh, and um, whatever we photograph uh, maybe helps them in indirectly to get more weapons and uh, from the NATO. I must say that taking a look at your work, Nathan, some of the photographs that you've shown me both privately and some of which have been published, you're often photographed with some of the Ukrainian soldiers. So I very much get the impression that you've managed to strike up a rapport with you and that they do respect what it is that you're doing. Yes, and they help and they want to get you out alive from the war zone. So they are very protective uh, of me. That's my own experience. They were very helpful and uh, they were very thankful that I was there. Um, a lot of the time I got, a few times, I got thanked for being there, for they regard this as being brave. And uh, they, they've got lots of respect for someone that's got nothing to do in this war, that comes and tells their story and that comes and document the overall and absurdity of war. Tell us a little bit about your personal situation, Nathan. What do your family think about the work that you do? You've been at it for more than two decades. Are you married? Do you have children? <laughs> uh, well, my family is not happy about it. I'm not married. I don't have children. I don't think I would be doing this job if I was. Um, or I would be doing it differently. Um, I don't tell my family when I go in. I only tell them when I come out. And uh, I don't want to tell many people when I go in because uh, they usually uh, transmit the stress and the fear. And I'm already dealing with my own stress and fear and I've got to stay 
with my head on my shoulder to take the right decision to not panic and take a wrong decision. Um, being tired is also another thing that you need to be careful of because when you're tired, you're more inclined to panic and to take the wrong decisions. So I try to stay with myself, deal with my emotions and to do my work as best as possible because once we are there, we we can't not take photos. We've got to be there and uh, do our job. Otherwise, there's no point putting ourselves in danger. And by being there, we put the soldiers in danger because if we get wounded, soldiers will come and get us and rescue us or try to get us back out of Ukraine. Uh, and so that, that endangers them uh, as well. So you've got to stay conscious that whoever is helping you is also risking their lives and you are endangering them as well. When last were you at home? Uh, I was home three weeks ago for a little bit, and uh, but otherwise I've been going in and out. I took two breaks since the start of the war and uh, one of them was three weeks ago. Uh, but the feeling of taking breaks is hard because we do feel like we abandon our uh, friends in Ukraine and the people who are helping us and who don't have a choice than staying there. So it's a very hard feeling to be home. The first few days are okay and then we we feel like cowards and we've got this really this feeling of abandoning people that we care about and that are living still in the madness of war. Finally, it's not just war or conflict that you cover. You've been to awards shows and done red carpet interviews. You've also been covering COVID. You were one of the first photojournalists in Europe to start covering the COVID pandemic pandemic when that broke out a few years ago. Maybe pick out a few highlights from your career in general that you can share with us. What gave you special satisfaction? So COVID was in Paris was uh, interesting to cover uh, because I got to see Paris empty, completely empty. Got to listen to the birds in Paris, which is something you don't get to do ever, I don't think. Uh, And I hope no one will ever experience that again. But uh, COVID was very special because everyone was at home and uh, scared. And uh, I was uh, strolling Paris and uh, embedded with the ambulance services, which uh, helped me a lot to do my work and to get me um around telling stories of the people that were infected and dying from the sickness and uh, it was madness at the start and uh, apart from that yeah i've done everything that uh, is press photography so red carpets chasing celebrities doing politicians i was recently my last break in france was to cover the elections the agencies decided that the priority was in Ukraine anymore and was the election, which is hard for us to get out of war, to go and cover something that uh, the world wants to see more than war. And um, so I had to focus on that. And uh, that was a good break. It was a change and it got me to be a bit more objective about what the priorities were and uh, it brings you back to the reality of peace and uh, living in a peaceful country and not having curfews and guns shooting. Currently also working for titles like Bloomberg and the Washington Post and sharing a bit with us on the realities of a war zone conflict area, what we can expect in Ukraine when we go to fetch those nine lions. That's the Daily Dispatch in discussion with Darren Mann. Join us again next week.